welcome to Brain Chat. I'm Dr. Mitzi Joy Williams, your board certified neurologist and MS specialist. And my mission is to engage, educate, and empower those affected by MS to become an active part of their healthcare team. Here on Brain Chat, we'll be discussing all things MS, health and wellness, advocacy, and we'll even throw a little bit of music and music therapy in there as well. Thank you so much for joining us and stay tuned for the next episode. Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome to Brain Chat. I am so excited to be here with you guys on this Monday evening um, with some amazing guests who are going to share their experience about MS and talk about advocacy in the MS space. Um, So for those of you who don't know, I'm Dr. Mitzi. I'm the nerdy neurologist, and I'm a board-certified neurologist and MS specialist. My goal is really to empower people living with multiple sclerosis and other chronic diseases to be active parts of their healthcare team. And so um, for those of you who have not seen before, we have got some action packed uh, guests with us tonight and I can't wait to get into it. For those who have not been on Brain Chat before, send us a message in the chat. Let us know where you are logging in from. I bid you greetings from Atlanta, Georgia, where it is a nice and cool 90 something degrees here. (laughs) I'm being facetious, of course. Um, but I hope that everybody's staying cool. Um, and we will go ahead and get into it. So I will start by introducing my wonderful guest tonight. Um, I've got three. Um, so we've got a lot to cover in a short period of time. Um, But we've got Ashley Ratcliffe, who is a best-selling author, communications professional, and invisible illness advocate and speaker. She was diagnosed with MS in March of 2018, and since then has used her voice to support and uplift those living with MS and other chronic illnesses. She published her first solo book called Jesus Year during the COVID-19 pandemic, and it is one of her proudest achievements. It's a self-help memoir about her MS journey um, and became an Amazon bestseller in April 2021. Um, and she also has an audiobook version of that. She currently serves as the Director of Communications and Operations with We Are Ill, a patient advocacy organization on a mission to redefine what sick looks like for Black women living with MS. All right. So we can't wait to hear from Ashley. All right. In addition, we have Stuart Schlossman, who is a recurring, returning guest on Brain Chat. He was just with us a couple months ago for our for the fellas show, which was great. Um, and he is the president and founder of MS Views and News. It's a not for profit 501c3 that provides educational information programs and services for the global multiple sclerosis community. To date, since its or, um, uh, foundation in 2008, MS Views and News has provided over 1,000 live educational programs in the USA, both in person and virtually. Um, he began Began his journey working with other organizations and co-facilitated a support group for over 10 years um, and has been very active in fundraising uh, for many MS organizations. And so very excited to have Stuart. And last but certainly not least, we've got Holly Schmidt, who I've been working with for some time as well. She is the vice president of scientific operations at Accelerated Cure Project for Multiple Sclerosis. She co-chairs the research committee of iConquer MS, a virtual patient-powered research network for MS established to perform and support patient-centered research in MS. She works to promote patient engagement throughout the research process and develop collaboration on topics of interest to people living with MS. She founded and leads the MS Minority Research Engagement Partnership Network, and that's uh, where we met and started uh, having the opportunity to work together. And it's an initiative um, aimed at promoting racial and ethnic diversity in MS research studies. And she also provides a direction of Accelerated Cure Project's MS MS repository, which provides highly characterized biospecimens from people with demyelinating diseases and controls to scientists worldwide. All right. So let's bring everyone to the stage. Welcome to Brain Chat, my friends. Hi. Hi there. 
Thank you guys so much for coming to spend a part of your Monday evening with us and inform the people. So I'm very, very excited about this conversation. Um, so last um, last episode, we talked a little bit about some of the resources from our, you know, larger patient or, or large uh, national advocacy organizations. Um, but I think it's very important to know what's going on, you know, on the ground, so to speak. What are the organizations that uh, people living with MS are, you know, essentially kind of running and really helping kind of set the tone for, you know, what are these organizations doing? And so how can people get involved? So I'm really excited because I've personally been able to work with each of you, you know, so I won't steal any thunder. But why don't we just kind of start off with telling us a little bit, each of you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in the advocacy space. All right. And why don't we start with Holly, since she's the first one uh, to my to my right here on the screen. Thanks, Mitzi. Yeah, I've been working in the MS space for over 20 years now, and I got involved um, through a good friend of mine who was diagnosed with MS back in the year 2000, and he went on to, found, to found this organization, Accelerated Cure Project, um, the year after he was diagnosed. And at that point, um, you know, he went around to each of his friends and said, I'm going to start this thing. Um, and I said, great, let me know how I can help. So initially I got involved as being an advisor and then on the board as a board member. Um, but not too long after that, I got involved in the research work that Accelerated mm -hmm. Cure Project was doing at the time. And then not long after that, in the year two, 20, 2002, I joined as a full-time employee and I've been doing this ever since and, um, and have been so excited to see how much MS and the research and the breakthroughs, um, new advances in MS have occurred over that span of 20 years. And I'm really delighted to be here, Mitzi. So thank you for having me. Awesome sauce. All right, let's go, Ashley. Hi, Dr. Mitzi. Thanks so much for having me. Um, so I was diagnosed with MS in March 2018, and it really threw me for a loop because I'd been healthy my whole life. Mm -hmm. And so um, just going through that process of getting a diagnosis, um, I was initially misdiagnosed as having a herniated disc in my L4, L5 spine. Mm -hmm. And I really had to advocate for myself because I wasn't getting better. And I ultimately got a second opinion, which led me to my diagnosis. And so um, I quickly learned the importance of advocating for myself. And um, after the initial shock wore off of, you know, having a chronic illness for which there's not yet a cure, um, I sought out to find my tribe and I found it through We Are Ill. And I would um, just go to like their meetups or just be a member of the Facebook group, the private Facebook group. And um, eventually Victoria and I formed a relationship, the founder and CEO of We Are Ill, and she invited me to be a member of the team. Uh, so I am now the director of communications and operations with We Are Ill. And I'm really proud of the work that we do um, to make culturally conscious um, educational materials for people who look like us. So. That's how I got started in the advocacy space. Awesome. Stuart? Gosh, um, thank you for that. So I was diagnosed in December 1998. And uh, by the way, sorry for the horrendous right lighting here, but I'm in a hotel in a little area of Mississippi. And you got I guess the mood the lighting going on. We'll take it. I, I, I guess they just don't know how to light up rooms around here, right? They want you <laughs> out of the room and doing things. It's only 101 degrees here right now. It's okay. Um, yes, it's very hot. Um, and and it's, uh, you know, it's after six o'clock at night, so it's still very hot. All right. So going back on things, I was diagnosed in December of 1998. And um, I found that, you know, I wasn't finding the information that I wanted to know about MS. What was wrong with me? Um, the doctors didn't have time to to spend with you and and nobody else was out there. So fortunately I was very internet savvy and I was able to get on the internet and find out what was wrong with myself. And then I started attending a support group and learning that nobody in the group really knew what the hell was wrong with themselves. So I was saying to them, you know what, let me check out, you know, tell me, tell me what you want me to find on the internet for you and I'll bring it back to you. And so little by little, I was doing this for this one large support group in Miami Dade and, um, and then support group leaders from around the state of Florida were finding out what I was doing and asked me if I could get it for them to, you know, find what their people have, you know, what's going on with them, what can they do and what resources are there available. So, 
So I started finding all these different things. Then I did some volunteer work with the National MS Society. I chaired their Coral Gables MS Walk for five years. And during those five years, I also chaired their Fort Lauderdale Walk for two of those five years. And, um, you know, people were asking me, how do we find out what's wrong with us? And I said, you know, you could ask me, but I don't have time to do this anymore. And at that time, I put a label on it. It was called Stu's Views and MS News. I so, remember that. I used right, to get the newsletter on my email. Right. And a lot of people do remember that. So um, so too many people were asking us to find out how we can, you know, get a program. And I tried speaking with the National MS Society and, and they said that that's not what they do. And I spoke with other organizations and they said that that's, you know, they don't do this in Florida. So somebody from my one of my walk teams and my, uh, my one of my committees said to me, hey, my husband's an attorney. Why don't we talk about forming an organization? And I said, because it seems like a lot of work. And, mm -hmm. uh, and sure enough, it is. And, you know, when you got that that note from me that we did over a thousand programs, that was a few years back when I gave that to you. And now mm -hmm. we've done over fifteen hundred educational wow. programs to date. Wow. Um, last year, between the virtuals and the in-person programs, we, we were able to provide 112 events. And this year will be pretty much the same. And I'm sure next year will as well. And that's why I'm on the road all the time and uh, having to stay at places like this. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to get you a ring light to put on your uh, laptop. We're going to get you a portable yeah, ring gotta light. Yeah, i got to get something. i got to get a portable to go with me. I don't know what to say. Yeah. I can't find how to get rid of that light behind me, but if I something's know. shining, you know, there we go. But, you yeah, know, I love, I love hearing you talk about your experience, Stuart, because it really does underscore the impact of one person. And obviously, we know you have a team. You have many amazing people that work with you. But, you know, whenever someone, you know, is like, how can I make a difference? That's right. One person can make a difference, right? Particularly if they begin to surround themselves with other people who are like-minded and they see a need. You know, I often tell, uh, you know, uh, people that I encounter, if there's a need and you don't see it out there, you might be the one you know, to fulfill that need or to start that group or to start that organization or that thing to address that need. And so, you know, that's something I really appreciate, you know, um, you know, about your journey and how you just really continue to grow and continue to educate the community, that's you know, right. um, True so it's extremely roots. important. True grassroots. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's uh, talk a little bit about each of the organizations that you all work with. I know we kind of touched on it a little bit. We kind of touched on, you know, a little bit of the mission, but let's just kind of go back around and do a round robin and tell us a little bit about, um, you know, Stuart, tell us a little bit about MS Views and News, and then we'll go, we'll go backwards to Ashley um, and then Holly. So do we have an hour? We do okay. not. We okay. have total. So you got to you got to give us the 50,000 foot view. We, we will do this. All right. So MS Views and News um, prides ourselves on these days being the leading MS organization providing events in rural and underserved communities throughout the United States. And when I say throughout, it's really not throughout because we cannot get everywhere. It's impossible to cover all the areas of the United States. If we were able to assemble all the MS organizations and all the pharmaceutical companies, I, I don't think that we could cover everywhere that needs to be covered. So we do the best we can. And we do that, again, we, we, um, we do our Compass MS Care series, which is Compass MS Care, Rural America and Underserved Communities. And we do that once or twice a month. And not only do we do those in person, but we also live stream these events as well. So we're not just picking up on whoever attends from the local audience, which is why I'm here in Jackson, Mississippi right now, but we'll also be online, you know, for that. So we'll draw in another 60 to 100 online during, during the program. And then again, the thousands that watch it, like, like your program as well, you know, that follows that. In addition though, we have, and we started a few of these virtual events in or during COVID uh, MS Views Now, which is talking about what's affecting the MS community now. And at the time, it was so we were talking about COVID and multiple sclerosis, and that went on for many, many months. Then we also did a program series during that time called the MS Hub, which is where we got um, the other MS organizations online, you know, with us to talk about and and to show the world what they're doing at that time. You know, what are they doing for the MS community during COVID? 
Um, but but again, that still continues to what what is happening in the in the world of MS now, and that's why it's called MS Views Now. Also, we do MS Neuro TV, which is all about symptoms, symptom management, um, mm -hmm. devices, um, complementary therapies, uh, complementary equipment. Last week we had on the founder of psionic sleeve and uh, you know that was something new to bring up and and make sure that people know about it and how can they how can they find out more about this you know in the future we'll do something on what else is available for foot drop and and many other things concerning you know symptom mm -hmm. management uh, we do things on health equities we have our series coming up which you're part of the uh, exploring diversity that you and mm -hmm. Sheila Thorne would be part of uh, we're mm -hmm. doing another one with exploring, um, excuse me, not exploring, but it's um, it's about uh, clinical research trials and how to get, mm -hmm. you know, how to make them more equitable towards for everybody. We mm -hmm. have a lot of virtual programs. We have physical mm -hmm. therapy. We have Pilates. Mm -hmm. We have mental wellness chat every month. We have mm -hmm. MS Conversations Now, mm -hmm. Patients Voices, which is me getting on the phone with somebody and interviewing. MS patients that are doing things for themselves and for the MS community. So mm -hmm. it, it yeah. shows the world that it shows the world that, you know, what they're doing. So that way people can see what they're doing. But it shows mm -hmm. also the MS community that you can work just because you have this diagnosis doesn't mean take your, you know, take time out in your life and sit on the couch and wait for a cure to come along. No, we want you to see that people are doing things. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's why I want to get hold of, we are ill with MS and get all those people online and, and, and make it a big thing, you know, let them, let yeah. everybody see what's, what everybody's doing out there. Yeah. Yeah. And I love it. The collaboration. Just, so the focus is really education, you know, education for the, you know, patient community, education about treatments, education about, you know, um, integrative medicine, complementary medicine, right. all of the things. So, you right. know, that's extremely important. So, Ashley, tell us a little bit about We Are Ill. So, you know, I work with We Are Ill. I sit on the board. Uh, so I'm very familiar with the amazing work that Victoria and you um, and Lauren and others are doing. But tell, tell uh, you know, the those who are listening or watching a little bit about, you know, the focus of We Are Ill. Yeah, simply put, We Are Ill aims to educate and empower Black women living with MS. Um, a lot of times we don't see ourselves represented in uh, other MS spaces. So that's why Victoria created We Are Ill, so that she could um, kind of be a light to that community. And we do a number of things for our community. We have a private Facebook group where our sisters in MS can ask questions and get support. Um, it's very positive and encouraging um, people ask questions um, about, you know, I, I think I'm having a flare up, what do I do? Um, we also um, host a um, annual wellness weekend, which is coming up in October. And that's our signature event. It's in Atlanta, uh, October 20th to 22nd this year. And it's just a wonderful space for black women living with a mess. It's like a huge retreat where we um, get educated. We learn about balancing health and wellness. Um, we provide resources and we build community. Uh, we also have a robust website where we have uh, resources um, about MS and particularly how it pertains to Black women. Um, we have a glossary of MS terms because it, I mean, honestly, it can be a little, um, it can be a lot <laughs> when you are diagnosed with MS. What is a DMT? What's a MS hug? All mm -hmm. those things come up and you don't have a frame of reference. And so we have all that information on our website. Um, we host, um, conversations. We host uh, member meetups. We also um, create educational materials for mm -hmm. MS Awareness Month in particular. We had um, a box that we give to our community and it had, in addition to like some goodies to help people thrive with MS, like a journal and affirmation cards and a pill pouch. Um, we also created um, educational uh, materials. We had conversations with uh, MS specialists about um, kind of demystifying what uh, clinical trials are, um, talked about self-advocacy. Um, so we just strive to um, meet our members where they are and educate them and um, evolve with them as well. We have big plans to um, empower our community to be professional patients. That's a coin that uh, Victoria termed. 
uh, coined, and it's uh, really about um, helping MS patients be the best that they can be um, by equipping them with everything that they need to know along with their journey. So that's a little mm -hmm. bit about We Are Ill. We do so much. I'm sure I forgot something, but that's just the gist of it. <laughs> that's a great start. Great start. All right, Holly, tell us a little bit about ACP and I Conquer MS. Yeah, happy to. Um, so we empower people living with MS to contribute to a brighter future for themselves and for other people through involvement in research. So Stuart, you mentioned, you know, people are diagnosed, they don't have to sit back on the couch and wait for a cure. And that is so true. <clears throat> and you can also be involved in, you know, the research that will eventually produce that cure or up before that point, you know, better um, options for people with MS or better health and better quality of life. And so that's what our organization is all about is helping people find ways to do that. So, you know, we feel that every single person with MS um, can contribute, can participate in research in one way or the other. Um, we launched a, a platform called I Conquer MS and that's spelled I-C-O-N-Q-U-E-R-M-S. And it's online. Um, so as long as you have an internet connection, you can go there, you can create an account, um, sign up, become a member. And once you've done that, you can take part in different types of research studies, depending on what you're interested in. You can uh, learn about studies that are being conducted elsewhere, including clinical trials. And you can contribute your own research ideas. And you can also vote and comment on the ideas that other people um, propose. So you can not only just be a participant, but you can be a proposer and you can be an influencer on what kinds of research take place within I Conquer MS. Um, some of the, we've, I Conquer MS has been around since 2014 and we've facilitated and promoted a lot of research since then. Some of the topics that we supported research on include COVID-19. We were actually really nimble um, back in April 2020, we launched a study and that was like just as the pandemic was getting mm -hmm. up and everybody was, you know, very nervous and scared. And we launched a survey about how that was impacting people that we could then, you know, analyze and share those results around. Um, we've also done research on how the COVID vaccines are working in people with MS. And so that was another um, area where we were pretty nimble and um, collected samples from people and analyzed that. But we've also done studies on things like employment issues. You know, what are the employment op obstacles that people face? Mm -hmm. Or um, how do people feel when they get their diagnosis, especially if it wasn't done well? You know, what is what kind of long term impacts does that have? And we've also done work in the area of complementary and alternative medicine. So those, those are just a few topics. Um, mm -hmm. Most of our studies are available for everybody to participate in. They're very inclusive. And then speaking of inclusivity, and um, Mitzi, I'm glad you brought up the MS Minority Research Engagement Partnership Network. Um, that is another thing that Accelerated Cure Project has been doing since 2016, mm -hmm. which is to bring more attention to the fact that, you know, right now, MS research is not very inclusive. You know, people, especially from racial and, minor uh, racial and ethnic minority groups have been left out of MS research, they have not been sought after, they have not been included, and that's an issue. Um, and it's also an issue for other groups, like people living in rural communities, like you know the ones that you visit, Stu, or people with disabilities who may have a hard time getting to a clinic to participate mm -hmm. in research. You know, These are all groups that need to be, that deserve to be included in research, and we're trying to find ways to do that. So, mm -hmm. um, and when people aren't included, we don't really have a complete and accurate picture of what MS is. And, and that's an issue. So we have mm -hmm. a number of initiatives to help make sure that everybody is included and everybody benefits from the results of research. Yeah, I love it. I love it. You know, so obviously, you know, I've, I've worked with everybody, so I might be a little bit biased, but, you know, you guys are all doing amazing work. I want to pause for a second and talk about the importance of you know, patient powered advocacy, right? One of the things that I've learned as a physician, I do not personally have MS. Um, I have been in the space, you know, helping and serving, you know, people in the MS community for over 15 years. But in more recent years, I found that, you know, it's important for me to do a lot more listening than talking. I remember the first Accelerated Cure Project meeting I went to, Stuart, you were there, um, and Holly, of course, you were there. Um, but I really didn't talk very much at all, you know, because I recognize that there are things that interest me. There are things that I may think, 
people want to hear. And some of those things align, but, you know, it's important to have that patient voice really at the center of everything that we're doing, um, because certainly we as physicians and, you know, people who are not a part of the community may miss the mark. So let's just pause for a second and talk about the importance, you know, or the difference um, when the advocacy is really focused and centered on the people living with the condition and really centering that voice versus when we're doing, you know, it the other way, traditionally the other way around where we say what we think people want and then we do that and then people are like, yeah, we didn't want that. I can start off if you like. Sure. Um, so in I Conquer MS, it's very important that the research that we do and the other activities that we do are focused and centered on the needs and preferences and priorities of people with MS first and foremost. There are a lot of other, you know, in general, research studies are driven by the needs and interests and priorities of the researchers or the mm -hmm. medical community. And that's not the way we do it. So we have a bunch of boards and committees. I'm co-chair of the research committee, for example. You know, we've got a, a board of uh, a governing board and engagement committee and things like that. Um, more than half of the people on those boards and committees have to be people with MS. And so my co-chair on the research committee is a person with MS. And then more than more than half of the people, at least half the people on my committee, have to be people with MS. And that's how we make sure that you know we don't go astray that you know we don't get off of the tangent uh, or we go off on a tangent onto something that somebody else cares about but people with ms really don't care about um, we also have an initiative within i conquer ms called the ride council which stands for research inclusion diversity and equity and um, that's another one of our minority engagement um, initiatives and that's focused um not only in what I Conquer MS is doing to make sure that people from um, underrepresented backgrounds are included, but it's also a resource that other researchers can access. And, and it's people with MS that belong to um, underrepresented groups. And we, there's about 30 people. We started about a year and a half ago. We've been working with them and listening, like you said, Mitzi, listening, and, and we act on their ideas. We don't say, here are our ideas. What do you think? We say, here's something that needs to happen. What do you all think we should be doing? How can we do that together? Um, because we we don't have the answers. I don't have the answers, you know. Um, and but it's the experts, the people living with MS and who belong to the communities that we're trying to serve better. They are the ones who have the answers, and we want to um, hear those answers and then work together to implement them. Yeah, great. Anybody else want to chime in? So I would like to. Well, sure. Ashley, if you want to, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to, well, I'll go since we're, you. There you go. <laughs> Ladies first. <laughs> um, thank you. But at We Are Ill, you know, Black women are centered and, you know, research shows that Black women have a 47% increased risk of being diagnosed with MS. Um, but things are changing, uh, you know, with more people um, focusing on Black women in MS, the Black lived experience with MS, but we um, aren't waiting, you know, for a seat at the table. We provide the seat at the table by hosting mm -hmm. events like um, our wellness weekend um, and our member meetups and our virtual online programming. Um, but all that to say, we also, we can't do it alone, but we are really grateful for our partnerships uh, with different organizations and pharmaceutical companies who recognize the importance of hearing from, you know, our community and want to partner with us to improve the way that they work. So that's something that we are really proud of and something that we're definitely leaning into as we go into 2024. Um, so, yeah. Okay. okay, I'll try to do this. So we, um, again, you know, it's, it's, it's a passion of mine to be able to get out to the areas that need it most. Um, and when I say need it most, I'm talking about bringing re the information for resources to people who just don't know. I mean, whether they were cut off from, um, from knowledge because of where they are logistically in the United States, in these rural areas that are you know, often far from from uh, people being able to attend programs or seeing things on the internet, or they just don't have internet capability because there is no internet where they live, um, or just um, helping out, um, you know, people that are involved with other groups. We are sponsoring a lot of different groups. 
we sponsor things to do with the one of the yoga organizations who you know about, uh, I would believe. Um, mm -hmm. We also have done things with the uh, MS Alliance of Virginia, and uh, we we support their their annual program every year. They do a big event, and and we're the primary sponsor of that. It's you know last year a week before Christmas, literally a week before Christmas, we had 125 people at a program there. Um, and that's just because they don't get these kinds of programs. So we bring mm -hmm. the programs to these areas and they, they, they come out like gangbusters to be part of it. Um, mm -hmm. We are ill. I mean, I was asked if we could support we are ill's program that weekend event and we are doing it. Um, you know, when uh, the MS coalition, when we have our meetings for the MS coalition, I'm the patient's voice. There's nobody else there that can give a voice as a patient. And in fact, um, there are times that when there are different uh, people from the MS coalition that are at ad boards with the pharmaceuticals, that the pharmaceutical gets around to the question that they want to know something specific about, you know, MS patients' viewpoints or or things to do with the MS patients. And there are other members of the coalition that just say, this is for Stuart to answer because they don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. so, you know, I'm bringing to the people what I feel that they need. We also mm -hmm. have hundreds of volunteers from around the United States that get involved with our programs. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's quite important. And, you know, they want to be involved because nobody else has given them that opportunity to be involved. Right. So, you know, they many times learn from what we're providing and then they set up a splinter organization. You know, even the, even some of the support groups that are in underlying areas around the U.S., we are helping to support mm -hmm. because we want them to be able to, you know, get their people out and do things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's so important, right? So the themes that I'm hearing here are collaboration, right? right. Um, so I love the fact that, you know, just because you have your own organization doesn't mean you don't support the other person that, you know, everyone is working together. Because ultimately, the goal is to improve and empower, you know, improve the lives of people living with MS and empower them, you know, to advocate for themselves. So I really love that, you know, um, before we kind of move on from this part, I want to talk a little bit about the importance of trusted information. So obviously, you know, when I do my shows, I'm very selective on who I invite as guests because, you know, certainly there are, you know, uh, many opinions. You know, uh, there are many ideas that people have out here on the Internet, whoever's Internet it is today, whether it's Beyonce's Internet or, you know, whoever's Internet it is today. Um, but, you know, I love the fact that you all do, you know, although the patient's voices are centered, you do collaborate with the scientific community, right, to make sure that you're providing valid information, you know, and so tell us a little bit about the importance of having trusted sources of information, you know, that you're providing or how you vet the information that you um, put out there to the community, because I know that you all put quality information out to the community. Who wants to go first? I'm a guy, so I got to let one of the ladies go first. You go, Stuart. <laughs> okay. Wait, let me find. All right. Um, you know, Mitzi, you know that we put on a tremendous amount of programs. Um, uh, many times people ask me, why do we use the same um, clinicians to speak at our programs? And my answer is simply because they are the best. That's my opinion. And uh, it's very hard for me to go outside the corridor that I have set up to bring in new people. But when we do bring in somebody different to speak, we require that they send us their slideshow um, because for our programs, it's not like a pharmaceutical company that's providing a slide deck. So for our programs, we give the the uh, the doctor or a nurse practitioner the topics that we want them to speak about, and then they have to put it all together. But they're not allowed to use anything that's that's um, that's signed off of by somebody else. You know, they they have to have everybody's permission if they're going to use somebody else's work. Mm -hmm. um, but there are times that we bring in that new person and they they come out with these things that I'm like, where did you learn this from? I mean, really, where the hell did you learn this stuff from? <laughs> One person tells me the other day that they want to do a dialogue and, you know, their 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 opinion on what a patient should be doing to take vitamin D. And I said, I, I'm sorry, I can't accept this. I really can't. I You know, if you can't say it correctly, then don't say it at all. 
Mm. All right. And um, they said, well, you're not a physician. I said, I've done enough of these programs to know what's right and not right. You know, mm -hmm. um, or the slideshow may not contain all of the pharmaceuticals that are, you know, all the medications that are currently listed. And because that person doesn't believe in it. But but that's mm. not the way you're supposed to be speaking. Right. You know, you're speaking for the better of everybody and let everybody have the opportunity to go back and discuss it with their doctors, not you play God to what somebody else should be doing. Yeah. So, um, so, you know, we find it very important that, yes, we vet the information. If I don't understand something that a doctor has in their slideshow, I just turn it over to one of the doctors that is associated with our organization, and they could tell me then yes or no, whether or not that should be part of the content. So otherwise, um, though, the content is different among the different I mean, you say something, Aaron Boston may something, say something slightly different, Ben Thrower again, slightly different, but it's all for the better of mm -hmm. the community. And uh, you guys are the experts. And so I have to rely on you all, you know, to get that information back and get it to the people. I love it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like uh, we are ill, we are patients, we aren't, you know, neurologists, we're not in the specialists. And so we, do rely on the authorities on MS. Uh, and in a way that kind of makes it, takes the burden off of us to, you know, try to come up with something. Heaven forbid we give someone the wrong information. And then, you know, like, we don't want that. We want to make people's lives easier and um, better. So we definitely rely on trusted sources of truth, like Dr. Mitzi, Dr. Rosenthal from Shepherd Center, the MS Society, uh, Can Do MS, so many of our partners, because, um, they know what we don't. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. And with I Conquer MS, um, we focus on research results. So, you know, we can very much ground what information we're putting out in the, re the research results that's been conducted appropriately and vetted and peer reviewed and things like that. So um, we've got a newsletter um, that we put out. It usually has a lot of um, very good, high quality research content in there, as well as research opportunities that people can participate in. Um, we have a webinar series called Chat with Chat, um, where we invite the researchers that we're working with to come and share the research that they've done or that they're working on with um, the iConquer MS community. And again, you know, they need to focus on, you know, what their results showed and, and they're happy to do that. Um, mm -hmm. But we feel it's important that we really, and we're actually, we have a new project right now where we'll be developing our capabilities of sharing clinical trial results with the MS community in, in ways that are, um, that people want to see them. And people want to see results in different ways. Some people might want to see it in a video. Some people might want to read a summary. Some people might want to see graphics. Um, there's all kinds of learning styles. And so we're working on developing the capabilities of doing that so that people can access research results that they may want to use or they may want to ask their doctor about, but they would feel um, intimidated or not even know how to go and find the original scientific paper. We break it, we're going to break it down and let them access it in different ways. So we're very excited about that. I love that, you know, so, um, you know, again, I'm hearing collaboration, you know, as a healthcare provider, um, you know, as a physician, you know, it's very humbling to see so many amazing people in the patient advocacy community, um, you know, and I think that we do have to sometimes take a step back and say, okay, is this something that people understand? Is this my opinion? Is this really, you know, um, you know, because kind of the mantra is, you know, when you go to do something, you, you're the expert in the room, but I'm not the expert on that person's lived experience with MS. And so um, I think that we all have to approach it with a, a sense of humility you know, to understand, you know, that we have to provide, you know, good information, valid information in a way that people can understand. So I want to switch gears just a little bit because our time is, man, the time is going by fast. Um, but I, I want to switch gears just a little bit and talk about what really was a turning point for you all. You all are very amazing, strong advocates. You know, I see many people in my clinic who are newly diagnosed. I meet people all over the country and they just are either afraid afraid to tell their story. They don't know where to start. Like, what was that turning point to say, you know what, I'm going to get out there and I'm going to just make a difference or I'm just going to, you know, put myself out there and see how I can get involved. What was that turning point for each of you? I want to jump in on this one. 
Go for it. I see you're you're jumping in your seat. You just you just <laughs> chomping at the bit. Go for it. So a lot of us after we're diagnosed with anything, it's like why me, right? Why me? Mm. Um, I seriously wanted to put me and my car into a canal. Mm. Um, and I or I wanted to run drive into a train on the train tracks or something. And I I literally one day was so depressed about the whole thing that I actually was riding on a canal bank and very, very close to putting me and my car into the canal when I said something that I can't say on this program. And, um, and I said, Stuart, you got a damn big mouth. You've always had a big mouth. You're a New Yorker. Use what you know, use the skills that you've got and help others get through this. Mm-hmm. And that's basically what I did. And so it was then that I contacted the MS Foundation. It was then that I contacted the MS Society. And I said, what can I do to help? It was then that I got involved. This was just a few months after diagnosis when I mm-hmm. spoke with the president of the South Florida chapter of the National MS Society and found out that they were going to need a new chairperson for their walk for the next year. It was then that I stepped in. It was then that I got involved with a support group, a very large support group in South Florida. It was then that I made the decision to co-facilitate that support group. It was then, it was then, it was then that I said, I'm going to meet as many people as I can, and I want to help them get the information that they need, and I want to be a voice in the community, and that is what I am. And these days, for everybody that says to me, you're doing too much, I say, you're wrong. And the next year I do more than the year prior and it just builds and builds and builds. Uh, Dr. Williams, you know that a few weeks ago you heard about it. I broke my leg. Yet that was after I did programs in Alabama, Kentucky, Tennessee, and took time in Europe for vacation and then found out I had a broken leg, which is why I was in so much pain, but I did not want to stop my travels. I wanted to just keep doing I've lived with pain my whole life. This was just another pain. This was just another Mm -hmm. pain to live with. So now I'm in this giant boot that I have to have on for 12 weeks. And sleeping is more of a problem than anything. But I have a voice. And I will will always speak. Right. I love that. I love that. What about you, Ashley? Um, I think for me, um, I was journaling my whole um, diagnosis journey just because it was, a lot of it was confusing. A lot of it was frustrating. Uh, so I journal as just, that's how I, you know, keep up with my mental health. And um, from time to time, people would just say like, oh, so, like my cousin is diagnosed with MS and uh, they don't know anyone. Would you um, care to like talk to them? And I would always say yes. But one um, incident in particular really got to me because someone from my church community reached out to me and said, hey, we have this young lady who, Um, was just diagnosed with MS and she's taking it really hard. Can you uh, talk to her? And I was like, yes, absolutely. I gave her my social media, my email, my phone number. And she never called. She never reached out. And I was just, it broke me because I'm like, she's suffering alone. Like she, Mm -hmm. it's like hard. Like, uh, you know, thank God I had a community, my family, my friends, my church um, to support me during my, when I was trying to figure out what was um, wrong with, wrong with me. But um, so that was kind of the catalyst for me to write this, uh, my book, Jesus year, because I don't know how many people out there just don't feel comfortable asking for help or they have no frame of reference for what MS looks like. So that really lit a fire under me to like get the word out. And I felt like, yes, I can talk to people one-on-one, but if I put it in a book, if I, uh, wrote an audio book, I could reach more people and kind of help them find their footing, you know, when they're uh, newly diagnosed. So that was the catalyst uh, for me to write Jesus Year. Um, And then after that, um, just through networking and just being a member of the MS community, I found uh, We Are Ill. And it was something different about this organization. It's very centered on people who look like me, who have the same concerns as me. Um, And so I was just, you know, a member of that community. And thankfully, um, Victoria saw a need, you know, to beef up the communications and she saw, knew that I was, you know, that was my zone of genius, so to speak. And um, the rest is history. I'm really proud of the work um, I've done with We Are Ill to, you know, help put out educational content, um, to beef up our newsletter, to all those things to um, 
give our community more insight into what life with MS can be like. And it makes, make it not so like gloom and doom. Like it's fun. Like we are ill means like it's a double entendre. We're sick, but we're sick, meaning we're dope. We're, we're lively. We have fun. Like we have swag. Like, so that, that was something that was really important to me when I found we are ill. It's like, um, uplifting. And so that was, um, yeah, all that to say, I'm really glad that I found We Are Ill and I'm really proud of the work that we're doing to make people who look like me feel less alone um, on their image journey because it is not for the week. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. What it's about great. you, Holly? Well, so I don't have MS myself, um, but like I said, I got involved in it because of a good friend of mine and I, I've stayed in it. I mean, I got involved because of my friend and also because of the the interesting challenge that MS is, you know, there, when we started, we were all about finding out what causes MS and there are a lot of different theories and we tried to go and research every single one, uh, looking at the literature. And that was a really, it was, I was just very curious about that. And I'm still curious about so many aspects of MS, but I think what um, really keeps me working in this area is not that it's really the people that I meet every day and the relationships that I formed and, and people with MS are, you know, by and large, just really special. Um, they, um, they really care about, um, you know, making that progress, not just for themselves, but for other people, you know, they're willing to participate in research or they're willing to, you know, do their own research and look things up and learn. I think part of that is due to, you know, their people with MS tend to be diagnosed in that prime of life, you know, in their twenties and thirties and forties when there's just so much at stake and so many dreams and plans for the future that, you know, it, it's worth the investment to learn all about it and do what you can. And so, um, so I, I try to use my voice whenever I can um, to augment those voices of the people that I've met who have MS. Um, you know, I try to, um, you know, try to make uh, MS research representative and fair. I try to make sure that the researchers that we work with um, or the pharma companies that we work with are incorporating the voices of people with MS when they're designing studies or when they're planning um, whatever activities, you know, that they're not doing it in a vacuum, but that they're connecting with people who can really shape their activities to be the best that they can be. So, um, so that's, that's what I try to do. I love it. Um, you know, and, you know, for each of you, it's different, you know, and, you know, for me, I'm sure if anybody's watched the show before or talked to me, you've heard, you know, my story about advocacy, about presenting research and realizing after 10 years, I was saying the same thing over and over again, but nothing had changed, you know, and so I said, if I can be an agent for change, then I'm going to try to push the envelope and try to change as much as I can, you know, um, and so we've made a little progress, but we still have a long way to go. Um, but I think it's just so important for people to know that, you know, you can make a difference, even if it's just sharing your story with those around you, right? You may not necessarily have a national or international platform, um, but certainly you can make a difference wherever you are in your sphere of influence. Um, so I'd like to encourage people, you know, to know that, you know, um, and to know that sharing their story could make the difference in someone else's, you know, journey and in their life. Um, so thank you guys for sharing that. And so I think, you know, as we're ending, what tips would you give people, you know, in the community to, you know, get involved in advocacy and how do they get involved with the work that you all are doing? We'll start with Ashley. Yeah. So I think as a patient, you have to educate yourself. Um, you, there's trusted resources out there in MS society um, and just stay informed about the latest developments with, you know, MS research. I personally have the Google alert set up for multiple sclerosis. So whenever something, you know, comes up, I'm like aware. Um, and um, Ooh, I, would, I bet that goes off all the time. Right. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it, it, I have to like pace myself because it's a lot, but, and then also to be an active participant, speak up, you know, about your needs, especially when you're um, talking with your care team, you know, um, tell them about what's going on in your life. If you have new side effects, like, to just tell them what you need, basically. That's what self-advocacy is. It's just speaking up and letting people know what you need. Um, so I would say that. And then um, you can get connected with We Are Ill. We're on um, Instagram at We Are Illmatic. And we have our website is weareillms.com, where we have all those resources. We have articles uh, from MS patients, uh, Black women living with MS, about 
how they thrive with MS. Uh, we have uh, from there, you can uh, get signed up for our newsletter. It comes out monthly. Um, yeah, those are my two tips. Awesome. Stuart? MSVs and News. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. MSVs and News. Um, you know, we encourage people all the time to speak for themselves. Um, don't wait for somebody else to speak for you. You got to have a voice. Um, if you cannot have a voice, find the person that's in your community that can be the voice for you. When you go to doctor's appointments, bring somebody with you. Um, you can't possibly remember everything, maybe not even because of cognition, but just because the whole stress of just being in a doctor's office. I mean, who the hell really likes going to a doctor's office, right? So, um, I don't. so you know, there, are, there are things that you're going to forget, right? There are things that you're going to forget. There are things that you're not going to remember to ask. So bring somebody with you, bring your notes with you. We have a tool that we designed years ago. It's on our website. You can fill it in online or you can print it out and handwrite it all out. It's everything that's bothering you about multiple sclerosis is on that two-sided sheet of paper. Bring, print it, bring it with you. And, uh, but first fill it out, all right? Make sure that the doctor um, or the staff are giving it when you arrive so that way it's not a swinging door theory with the doctor, you know? The doctor will see everything that you're there for rather than on the way out. Oh, I forgot to ask you. And well, sorry, there's no more time for you today. Um, so there are many things that you could do for yourself. And but you got to be your own advocate. You've got to um, you got to forget that you may be shy and you really got to learn to speak up because mm -hmm. your voice has got to be heard. Mm -hmm. And uh, for anybody that wants to get in touch with us, you just go on the Internet and type in MS views and news, not news and views, but views and news. All right. And uh, there will be tens of thousands of articles that come up about the things that we've done. Awesome. All right. We'll let you round it out, Holly. Um, you know, research is obviously a passion of mine. You know, we talked a lot about communities that are overlooked and underserved when it comes to research. You know, my usual admonishment to people is get in where you fit in. If it's not a clinical trial, there's a survey. That's there's right. something you can do, uh, something with diet, with exercise, with yoga. There are all kinds of things that you can do to get involved. So where would you tell people to start? Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I think research participation is so empowering and it's a great way to advocate for yourself, but also advocate for everybody else because you're mm -hmm. contributing to the knowledge base that's going to determine the future and make it a better one. So like you said, Mitzi, you, you don't have to you don't have to take a drug, you know, that uh, they're trying out. Uh, you don't have to change what you're currently doing, although you can. And there are a lot of options for that as well. And that might be the right answer for you. Um, but you can take surveys, you can participate in exercise studies, diet studies, you can do surveys, you can, um, you know, contribute to new forms of MRI, you know, so that we can learn more from those images that you have to get. Um, there's lots and lots of studies that you can do. Um, I would advise everybody to come to iConquerMS.org. Everybody is eligible. Everybody um, is encouraged to participate there. And there are also ways to get involved in the leadership of that too. So if you're interested, you can sign up for iConquerMS and then contact us. Um, you can ask your doctor, you know, I don't know how many people when they go to their doctor's appointment, I know the doctor's appointment is a busy time and mm -hmm. there's not a lot of extra time, but if you have a moment, ask your doctor, you know, do you, are there any research studies you're aware of that I could participate in? And here's mm -hmm. what I'm interested in doing. It, uh, doing. Um, Mitzi, you've got the African-American registry mm -hmm. and people should definitely sign up for that. Mm -hmm. um, there's other kinds of registries for Hispanic people or other categories of people. So, um, you know, if you belong to a special group, um, do some Googling or go to the MS Society site. They've got a, a research opportunities page and you can look there. Um, but yeah, there's lots and lots of opportunities. So take that step. Um, I think you'll be glad you did. Yeah. Well, guys, our time is up. Um, this has been an amazing and 
um, empowering conversation. I thank each of you for taking the time out to share about the organizations that you're also passionate about, about the work that you're doing, you know, and how each of you are really making a difference. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you um, and the work that you're doing to help, you know, the larger MS community. And, you know, if anybody comes to see me, they hear they hear your names, they hear about the organizations, you know, because I'm a firm believer um, that, you know, all of us need to collaborate together to, to get the work done. Um, so I appreciate you, Holly, Ashley, and Stuart for coming on Brain Chat tonight. Thank you all for watching Brain Chat. For those who will be listening in the future, you know, we appreciate you to, uh, plugging into these resources. We thank our sponsors, um, Genentech and the National Mess Society. And I will see you all again in two weeks. Thank you thank guys you. so much. Have so a much. great evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.